Good, aft <laughs> Good afternoon and welcome to St. Paul the Apostle Church. Here are some special announcements. Please feel free to take home the Bread of Life prayer cards that are available as you exit the church. Eucharistic Adoration is on Tuesday this week from 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. here at St. Paul's. Please join us as we honor the Bread of Life. Our Mass for the Solemnity of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary will be held at 6.30 on Wednesday, August 14, here at St. Paul's. This is a holy day of obligation. Our elementary vacation Bible school is this Friday, August 16, in the school. Please help spread the word to our children and gra grandchildren to join us. We will host everyone for vacation Bible school every Friday during August here at St. Paul's. We are still accepting applicants. Our sister parish, Our Lady of Mount Carmel, is holding a special festa celebration on Saturday, August 17th, from noon till 7 p.m. We will host a garage sale, a bouncy house for the children, and all the food we love. Please join us and support Our Lady of Mount Carmel Parish. Today's Mass is applied for the repose of these souls. Barbara Coughlin, Ann Sturgis, William Simlowski, Edward Doris and Michael Kubik, David Brennan Sr., Daniel Brennan Sr., Frank Brucker Jr., Bob McElroy, Randy Bowers, Bernadine and John D'Amato, Bruna Grasso, Joseph Virginia, and David Manafo, Diana Bovey, Irene and James Kelly, Dorothy and Chet Morrow, Rosalie Clossy, Jonathan Mills, Barbara Crystal, Susan Baker, Clara Rapavi, William Thomas, Pre Patricia and John Zabrowski, and Summit Daria. Our Mass will begin shortly. Once again, welcome.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are the bread of life, Lord have mercy. You are the word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Christ have mercy. And you have saved us from our sins by your death and resurrection, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, whom, taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Kings. Elijah went on a day's journey into the desert until he came to a broom tree and sat down beneath it. He prayed for death, saying, This is enough, O Lord. Take my life, for I am no better than my father's. He lay down and fell asleep under the broom tree. But then an angel touched him and ordered him to get up and eat. Elijah looked, and there at his head was a hearth cake and a jug of water. After he ate and drank, he lay down again. But the angel of the Lord came back a second time, touched him, and ordered, Get up and eat, else the journey will be too long for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then, strengthened by that food, he walked 40 days and 40 nights to the mountain of the Lord God, Horeb. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which you were sealed for the day of redemption. All bitterness, fury, anger, shouting, and reviling must be removed from you along with all malice. And be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving one another, as God has forgiven you in Christ. So be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and handed himself over for us as a sacrificial offering to God for a fragrant aroma. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The Jews murmured about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? Do we not know his father and mother? Then how can he say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered and said to them, Stop murmuring among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will raise him on the last day. It is written in the prophets, they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Through the words of the Gospel, may our sins be wiped away. Well, having survived the deluge yesterday, and all the heavy rains in Schenectady and Albany and around the state of New York, we pray for all those who were affected adversely by the heavy rains that we've experienced. But it gave me some time to reflect and research on all of the bulletin announcements that have been spelled a different way with one word or one character off that might change the meaning of everything. So here are some peculiar examples of the bulletins. The choir invites any member of the congregation who enjoys sinning 
to join the choir. <laughs> Singing, not sinning. <laughs> Barbara remains in the hospital and needs blood donors for more transfusions. She is also having trouble sleeping and requests tapes of Father Nelson's sermons. <laughs> and lastly, ushers will eat latecomers. <laughs> Careful, Joe. <laughs> ushers will seat it's supposed to be, not eat the latecomers. <laughs> One letter, everything is different. We reflect again on the bread of life, Jesus who gives us the meaning of our own existence and who nourishes us with his precious body and with his sacred words. We remember today with great joy our own experience of receiving Jesus for the very first time. Now, some of us cannot remember to the way it was when we were seven or eight years old and we received our Lord at First Holy Communion. Of course, some of us here received Jesus a little bit later in life. If you were received into full communion with the church, you may remember that experience with greater clarity. But for some of us, we remember only bits and pieces of what that day was like at our First Holy Communion celebration. Most of us, if we bring back that memory, we remember with joy receiving Jesus. And we were surrounded by not just the people in our class or our group who received Jesus for the first time, but we were surrounded by our family. Maybe our mothers and fathers were sitting next to us in the pew, or maybe they were in another part of the church while the group was at the front of the church when they received our Lord. But we were there with our mothers and fathers and our families, and we may have a photograph of that day. And we may remember, as I do, at St. Anthony's in Schenectady, where I received my first Holy Communion. It was a day very much like today, a very beautiful day, not rain or any of these adverse weather conditions. It was very beautiful and surrounded by many family and classmates. And that is the vision of the table of the Eucharist. I would ask you to ponder and pray over this day. God invites you and I to the Eucharistic table as the body of Christ, not as individuals. Yes, of course, we made the individual decision with the help of the Holy Spirit to come here today. And as St. Paul teaches, we will not be grumbling or we will not be hateful when we leave the church. Remember that in the parking lot now. <laughs> but impelled by the Holy Spirit, you and I have come together to be nourished by the Eucharist once again. And that very decision that we need Jesus this week, every week, is a way of saying before the Lord that we give ourselves in the way of the cross to you, that we may live the life of this cross, that you have died so that we may have life. Let us be able to live in the same way in our own day and time, hard as that may be to give up quarreling and jealousy and hatred. How can we say that we will live by the Spirit of God if we receive the Eucharist and at one and the same time bear grudges, hate people, seek revenge, and try to get even with people. It's very difficult to live that way because that is a duplicitous living, to live two different ways before God. And that conflict will ultimately divide the soul and take us away from God. We want to be authentic people of the Eucharist before the Lord and to know that the bread of life, the Eucharist that gives us life, that nourishment for the way is what energizes the soul, that we need one another around that table. And that decision to come to the table of the Eucharist, impelled by the Spirit, is a communal decision. That means that the body of Christ gathers as a group of people around the Eucharistic table, 
not alone or not away from each other, but with one another, sinners as we all are. Our ancestors received manna from heaven, as the prophets shared. The manna from heaven fed them while they awaited the Savior, the Messiah. Would you be surprised to learn that the manna that came from heaven that fed our ancestors was stored by Israel in a tabernacle? It was. That was a prefiguring of the Eucharist of Jesus Christ. No wonder why the church honors the body of Christ in such a way. That this food from heaven was so special that it was to be preserved by Israel because they needed it for the journey ahead. Whatever the trial or distress, they needed to come together to worship the living God. And in much the same way, the church honors the gift of the Eucharist not just in Jesus whom we receive, but in the sacred adoration of the Holy Eucharist. We have Eucharistic adoration from time to time or on regular schedules across various parishes of churches in the world. And that worship of the Eucharist is a sign that this is the bread of life come down from heaven. I am the bread of life the Lord teaches. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And the Gospel of John says it so well for us. What is eternal life? Believing. Sometimes we have long lists of what eternal life will be or what it's going to look like. But St. John honors the contribution of our Lord Jesus by saying eternal life is believing in the Savior, believing in Him. And that belief will impel us to the greater good in him, to pronounce his mercy and his kingdom always. Therefore, if the Eucharist of Jesus is the new manna from heaven that we receive, it is not just a symbol of Jesus. It is not just a sign of what happened 2,000 years ago at a special supper. It is Jesus. And the community, the new Israel, you and I, preserve entirely the body of Jesus Christ. And we honor him and we preserve him, not just in the tabernacle, but in the tabernacle of the soul. In the tabernacle of the soul, Jesus enters and permeates and gives definition to what it is that we do and who it is that we are. When you and I are sick, there is something that happens to most of us. We don't feel like eating. If we're sick with a cold, or if we have something with a stomach bug, we avoid foods. If we're very sick, we cannot eat at all, sometimes nothing by mouth. And if that's the case, we have to take an IV from time to time and being in the hospital. At that time, we are ill, we cannot eat on our own, and we need to be fed. Can we not logically conclude that there are family members in our own Catholic family who decided they don't want to eat? They don't want to have the Lord. They don't need the nourishment, they say. Can we not conclude then that there is some spiritual illness or bankruptcy or at least deficit missing in the spiritual journey of some of our brothers and sisters whom we pray for? They will be back. We do not know the day or the time. Whether you were here last week or whether this is your first time here in 20 years or you're back home, to Schenectady, you're on vacation. Whatever the case may be, it is the bread of life who calls you today. Not so much worried about what happened 30 years ago, but you're here today. 
There was a voice within who impelled you toward the altar of the Lord. And that voice is the voice of the Holy Spirit who is calling you to be well. You are surrounded by your mothers and fathers. And you remember your mother and father who was with you on the day of your first Holy Communion. Though they may not be here today, they are certainly with you and me in spirit. And as they may be resting in the peace of the living God, they are praying for you and for me that we remain humble, faithful, and devoted people, driven by only the Holy Spirit to be the best people that we can be, people as Jesus would ask us to do and be for others. We need the Eucharist. And just as there are elements hidden in our favorite foods or other foods that we will never be able to define, but yet we seek nutrition from these foods, so too there is a mystery in the Eucharist that cannot be defined in the English language, and it is only a void that Jesus can fill. Just as our mothers and fathers were there from the very beginning to bring us to Jesus, now the mantle passes to us. For you, blessed with children, to bring your children closer and closer to Jesus, the bread of life, and to be fed, for he is life. The bread of life endures forever. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us continue to pray for one another on the road of life. For the church, that we will find nourishment and sustenance in Christ, the bread of life, for our daily journey and the fulfillment for all the hungers and yearnings of our hearts, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the ability to imitate Christ, that we may put on the mind and heart of Christ and be empowered to show compassion and forgiveness to others, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who see little need for God in their lives, that they may be drawn back to the nourishment of the Eucharist, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who are ill in any way, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the souls of the faithful departed, that they who received the bread of life may live forever, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask all of these prayers through Christ our Lord. Today's second collection 
will be for the buildings and grounds. Thank you very much for your generosity. As we present our gifts, please join in singing number 677, where love is found. 
you are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Edward Scharfenberger, our Bishop, and all the clergy, Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace, everyone.
away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. By the will of the Father, the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death, gave life to the world. Free me by this, your most holy body and blood. All my sins and for every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments. Never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
body of Christ. Of life is body of Christ. Come share the body of Christ. Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth through Christ our Lord. Have a wonderful week ahead, everyone. Take good care. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Our recessional song is number 448. Blessed be the Lord. 448. Be the Lord, 
Thank you for having me. <laughs> Take